So we had the annual conference organized by uh, Frontier Securities about uh, capital raising and investment. Uh, I have the chance to have uh, Mr. Michael Hardridge uh, next to me. He's a partner at Hogan Lovells uh, since two years based in Mongolia. He's as well a consultant at GTS Advocates. And uh, my first question would be about uh, maybe, uh, it's a tough question, but uh, briefly summarize the, uh, the Mongolian business landscape from a legal perspective. From a legal perspective, it is fairly impressive when you compare it to other emerging jurisdictions. You don't have as many laws or regulations that insist in a prescriptive fashion that there needs to be certain contents to a contract. The laws generally reflect the idea that parties to a contract are free to decide the terms among themselves without any sort of paternalist intervention from the state. Also, there are very few situations where you have to deal with a, a governmental approval process. In some jurisdictions, these things are discretionary, and it's not a question of the state just looking at the legal issues, but actually playing a protectionist role for the counterparty, the local party. Mongolia doesn't have that. There are struggles and problems with respect to having operating permits issued, but in truth, I see that no different than any other jurisdiction. Um, and finally, I would say that one of the, the, the issues that um, I find quite uh, compelling about the Mongolian legal system is that it enshrines the concepts of providing expro uh, compensation in the event of expropriation. And then allied with that is the concept that all issues are to be addressed in accordance with public and publicly available law, rather than relying upon confidential policies or other matters. So, so in, in many ways, the legal system here, uh, while it has its shortcomings, is much closer to a classic Roman-German civil code system. Okay, thank you. Uh, I understand that your law firm uh, is pretty busy at the moment. I mean, what are the uh, what 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 are the area sorry what are the areas that are driven the main demand for legal services? Well, we're a business law firm, so what we see is there's a very wide array of companies of foreigners coming to Mongolia. For example, we represent a number of the luxury consumer product distributors. We represent logistics companies who now realize, gee, there'll be many, many foreigners coming to Mongolia. They're going to need better logistics services to make the move than what's existed before. You have those who are realizing that the potential travel agencies, and that's not taking foreigners to see camels in the desert, but rather taking, rather that is to take very, very well-heeled and very wealthy Mongolians overseas to see sites, reflecting the fact that there's a, uh, a very sophisticated and very, very well-to-do elite that wishes to see the world. And then, of course, there's the banking, there's the mining, there's the infrastructure work. We're also involved with dispute resolution matters. So what we see is a very, very broad panoply of different types of business work that very, very reminiscent of uh, whenever a, a closed jurisdiction suddenly finds itself open to international investment. I understand that there are many laws currently developed or being drafted or amended, like the security law, company law. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it a challenge for your activity? I mean, to adapt to this kind of uh, uh, new law coming in, I mean, uh, quite, uh, I mean uh, quite in high number recently? Again, one's point of view will depend on one's point of reference. Uh, I spent 18 years working in mainland China, and for practitioners familiar with China, they'll be very, very experienced with the dizzying array of laws, regulations, rules, and decrees that are issued without any sort of sense of, of a goal of harmonization of those statutory commands. In Mongolia, the legislative system sometimes produces laws which are not well thought out. Other times, they are well thought out. Uh, it's a challenge to keep up with these changes. But at the same time, one's given notice. There's an agenda that parliament has with respect to new laws being considered. Mm -hmm. And th there is also the opportunity for, for outsiders to provide their input on laws that may impact their businesses through the parliamentarians. And there's also the opportunity to anticipate change 
and then be able to advise clients that this is the current posture of the law. You know, we know that it's in the process of changing. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally no different than any other jurisdiction. Uh, I read that uh, the transparency was an issue when the, they try to uh, when the drafting is in process. That uh, maybe there's uh, it's not very open to uh, to foreigners for comment or the debates of the session. They are not public. Mm -hmm. Does it? Uh, and sometimes I mean uh, some uh, specialists comment. I mean they complain that uh, they are basically just uh, have to to face the last draft and they can barely amend it or would provide feedback. I mean, do you think this is uh, still a problem? That, that, that's not an unusual problem, and people do encounter that that after a whole series of decision-making has been taken that suddenly someone will say, ah, maybe we should get a lawyer involved and you know, at the very last minute present it to a lawyer who quite simply won't be in a position to do his best under those circumstances. At the same time, what I believe is that there are opportunities for those outsiders who are committed to Mongolia to be able to have a number of sotto voce discussions with people in power. I, I, I generally tend to think that the approach of, of outsiders preaching the issue, or preaching the rule of law to Mongolians um, in a rather high-handed fashion to be very counterproductive to those goals. Uh, what, what is the next bill or project of uh, law that is going to have the major impact from your perspective in terms of business environment and foreign investment that, is, uh, that should come and probably uh, anytime soon? Well, I think that there is concern about whether the idea of strategically important projects will be expanded beyond the scope of the minerals law into other areas, other business sectors. That would be a step, unfortunately, closer to the Chinese system of regulating different economic sectors for investment, which has proved to be quite a headache uh, for many, many foreign investors in China. I think implementing something like this will make it difficult for Mongolia to, to continue to attract foreign investors if it winds up having something that's less elegant than the current set of rules whereby anything that's open to investment is per you know, anything that's uh, uh, not prohibited is open to investment. You just mentioned before about the rule of law. I mean, this is a question that maybe I would like uh, more, maybe more feedback uh, from your perspective. What is the, the strength of the rule of law in Mongolia? I, I think that there is embedded within the Mongolian cultural DNA an acceptance of the idea of a code of conduct and the fact that, it was a, that, that Mongolia was able to enact such a fine civil code after so many years of, of Soviet rule and before that so many years of isolation is a reflection of the fact that Mongolians culturally accept the idea that there is a code and one needs to measure one's conduct by the code. The complication comes about, I find, in the implementation that you can have clarity in laws but still there are people who are not really familiar with what a contract should look like. There are people who aren't aware that there are judicial remedies to be able to right wrongs committed against them, such as infringement of intellectual property. So while a code of behavior is understood, it's still somewhat early days in, 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 in having people become increasingly un, uh, aware of how one can implement the principles of law through contracts, through reasonable uh, court actions, and the like. So maybe a last question about the role of the judiciary mm -hmm. in the, what do you think, I mean, are they able to cope with the, uh, the new laws coming in and... Uh... Well, I think the, the country is going to be under an extraordinary challenge over the next year. Quite simply, it's, we're seeing a resource boom the likes of which one most people haven't seen in the course of their lives. I have a colleague who has uh, compared the opportunity and the situation here with Saudi Arabia of the 1930s, and I think that's accurate. So I think the judiciary is going to be challenged. Certainly law firms will be, accounting firms, all types of professional service advisors uh, will be dealing with this extraordinary inflow of work and it will be a challenge to be able to improve standards or help standards continue to comport with international quality and 
to deal with the rising volume. This will be, I, though I, I am very, I, I say this quite a bit and in my heart of hearts, I really do think that this is still a true statement. And I do think this forthcoming year will be the most important year for Mongolians since they came together as a people in 1206. Michael, thank you for your time and thank you for your brilliant presentation this morning. Pleasure indeed. Thank, thank you. you.